intense rainfall during monsoon continue from early June to mid September. During the months of October and November, owing to the apparent movement of the sun towards the south, the ITCZ also shifts southwards. The low pressure area over the Indian subcontinent becomes weaker and the pressure difference that caused the monsoon disappears from the Indian subcontinent. And with this, most of the Indian subcontinent bids farewell to the downpour season. Monsoon starts retreating from western Rajasthan by the first week of September. By the end of September, the winds withdrew from Rajasthan, Gujarat, the western Ganga plains and the central highlands. By the beginning of October, the low pressure area gets transferred to the northern parts of the Bay of Bengal. And slowly, the northeast trade winds start replacing the monsoon winds. The low pressure area sets in motion another set of interesting events. Due to this low pressure zone, cyclonic depressions originate in the Bay of Bengal. Now, under the influence of the northeast trade winds, they reach the eastern coast of India and cause heavy and widespread rains. Often, these cyclones strike the coasts of Andhra Pradesh and Odisha and cause enormous losses of life and property. The majority of the rainfall received by the Karamandal coast is due to these cyclonic depressions. By November, the low pressure area moves over Karnataka and Tamil Nadu and by mid-December, it completely leaves the Indian Peninsula. By this time, the southwest monsoon winds disappear and are completely replaced by the northeast trade winds. This period of transition is called the retreating or the post-monsoon season. There are certain characteristic features that are associated with this retreating monsoon season. Let's take a look at these one by one. During the retreating monsoon season, temperatures are high during the day and nights are cool. Owing to the heavy rainfall between the months of June and September, the land is still moist and hence the atmosphere is humid. Due to the hot temperatures and high humidity, the weather is oppressive. As this is primarily seen in the month of October, it is called the October heat. The season of the retreating monsoon is also known as the transition season as it marks the transition from the hot, wet and rainy season to the dry winter season. Well, 
it means that there is hardly any noticeable seasonal change in the temperature pattern during winters. For example, the average maximum temperature in January at Tiruvananthapuram is 31 degrees Celsius and for June it is 29.5 degrees Celsius. Hardly any difference, right? Now this is possible due to the moderating influence of the seas in the peninsula region. Moving on, let's talk about the pressure conditions and rainfall patterns during this time. We know that during this time of the year, a high pressure region develops over the Indian subcontinent and the northeast trade winds dominate the region. These winds move from the land to the sea. Thus, they are dry and do not cause rainfall. While most parts of the country witness dry weather, there are some parts which do experience rainfall, like the Tamil Nadu coast. Northeast winds while crossing over the Bay of Bengal pick up moisture and cause rainfall in this area. Apart from Tamil Nadu, even the northwestern India experiences rainfall during this time. The rainfall here is caused by western cyclonic disturbances. The western cyclonic disturbances are low pressure systems that originate over the Mediterranean Sea. Under the influence of subtropical westerly jet streams, these wind systems reach India and cause rainfall. These winter rains that occur over the plains help in the cultivation of Rabi crops. This rainfall is locally known as Mahavat. It is experienced in the north and northwestern parts of India. So that's about the winters in India. In some places, things freeze and people shiver, while others hardly notice a difference. After the shivers of the cold winter days comes the scorching summer. The summer season is primarily observed from March to May. This change is observed due to the apparent northward movement of the sun. In summers, the temperature in the Deccan Plateau reaches about 38 degrees Celsius, while in some of the northwestern parts of the country, temperatures of around 45 degrees Celsius are experienced. That sounds terrible, doesn't it? So, as you can see, the temperature in the peninsula than in the northern part of India. This is due to the moderating effect of the oceans surrounding the peninsula region. The hot weather season in India is characterized by the presence of dust storms and localized thunderstorms that occur in different parts of India. Let us see each of these features of the summer season in India one by one. Lulu is a strong, gusty, hot and dry wind that blows during daytime over the north and northwestern India. These winds raise the temperature of the region and exposure to these winds can even prove fatal. <sighs> I guess you want to stay away from this loo. Northern India also experiences dust storms. These dust storms lower the temperature and bring rain and cool breeze to this part of India. The hot weather season in India is also characterized by the presence of localized thunderstorms. They cause torrential rain, violent wind and even hailstorms. These thunderstorms are known by different names in different places. For example, in West Bengal, they are known as Kal Desaki. West Bengal isn't the only place that receives rainfall around this time. Towards the end of the summer season, Kerala and Karnataka also receive pre-monsoon showers. As these showers help in the ripening of mangoes, these bouts of rain are also known as mango showers. After summer,
comes the monsoon and then the cycle starts again. Thus, we saw four seasons. The advancing monsoon, the retreating monsoon, the cold winter season and the hot summer season. Monsoon climate with its seasonal reversal of winds has profound effects on the lives of the people in India. About 64% of the people in India depend on agriculture for their livelihood and a majority of them depend on the monsoon rainfall to cultivate their crops. Agriculture output in India directly depends on the amount of rainfall received and its distribution across various regions. As rainfall varies across different regions, the crops cultivated in these regions also vary. Crops which require less water, like millets, are cultivated in regions with low rainfall. For example, in Rajasthan, paddy which requires plenty of water is cultivated in regions that receive good rainfall. Rivers from which we derive our water supply get the majority of their water supply in the monsoon season. The monsoon rainfall is good for agricultural prosperity and for the replenishment of rivers. But the situation varies as the rainfall varies in different parts of the country. Inadequate rainfall can lead to droughts while excessive rainfall can lead to floods. This can cause widespread devastation and distress to people. The same rhythmic cycle of winds is experienced by people all across the country. Their agricultural activities, festivals and the variety of plant and animal life around them. Everything falls into the rhythm of these monsoon winds. Thus, we can say that the seasonal reversal of winds and the accompanying rainfall, despite its variations, make monsoon a unifying feature of the Indian subcontinent.